Hey guys, it's Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, and we are live. I'm Rhonda Draculis with RK3 Designs, and welcome to our show. All right, so tonight, I hope that you guys have had a better week than I have had. Uh, so tonight, the whole theme of this live is simplicity. We are actually going to do the whole finish using two colors, black and white. I need simplicity in my life. So tonight, that's what you're gonna get. So I've had a really hard week so far and it's what, Tuesday? Yeah, it's been one of those weeks. Got some news today I just wasn't really happy about. So I decided I needed to call in some reinforcement to help me tonight. And guess who I called? Me! All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot something. Literally, oh, literally, y'all. She just literally walked in the door. I did. And crawled on the floor to make her grand entry. So. Gotta be grand. Hi, friend. Hi. <laughs> Okay, so tonight, literally, guys, we are going to do a very, very simple finish that's going to look amazing. It is so easy to do. I'm literally using two products to begin with. We may take it to the next level, but you. you know, you never know. So tonight, literally, the two colors that I'm using are white Alumalite dye and the color passion black passion now if you don't have color passion then you can substitute with the alumalite black dye but the reason i'm using the color passion is i really like the way that it interacts with our dye and gives me a really cool look so first of all are you checking my measurements no. What are you doing? I wanted to see what colors you were doing. I'm doing black and white. That's it. So no no crazy colors. But I'm going to let you come in later and add your flair. How about that? Okay. All right. So before we get started, I have got a board here. And I have prepped it because we're going to be doing a modified exotic pour, I guess you would call it. Dirty pour. And we're going to be using more than three ounces per square foot. So that's why I have dammed it up. So I'm going to show you guys a different way to dam up your edges besides just tape. And this has worked amazing for us over uh, the last few pours that we've done, especially when we do a rock edge. Because if any of you guys have tried to do a dirty pour or an exotic pour over a rock edge, you guys know that it's almost impossible to get a really good seal. So... But before we go any farther, I want to say hello to all of my moderators. Hi, moderator. <laughs> uh, Erica is here. <laughs> Clara. Say hello, Clara. And Vamp. Is Vamp on? All right, guys, I have the best in the business for my moderators on this channel. If you haven't noticed, they are ahead of the game. They answer your questions. They post links to products, they're amazing. I could not do what I do without them. So give them a heart. All right, and I had a comment from a lovely fan of my YouTube channel last week that says, it's a shame that Kenny gets so mad that I don't let him be the star of the show. So without further ado, I want everyone to give my husband a lot of hearts because if that guy that left that message actually knew how mad he gets at me when I do what I'm doing right now he would laugh at himself so everyone let Kenny know that he's the star of the show yeah, how about a thumbs up all right give everybody give him a thumbs up oh, look at all, those all right Woo! All right, we all know that Kenny is the star of the show. Everybody knows. Everybody knows that. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to show you guys this cool way to dam up your edges. All right, so first of all, love it. <laughs> you want to start with 
vinyl foam. What is this stuff called? Self stick, Self -stick weather, weather seal. seal. <laughs> that All is right. a whole mouthful. That is a whole mouthful. So it is this stripping stuff right here. Okay. Now you ask me, Rhonda, what do you do with that stripping stuff right there? It's called weather stripping. Weather stripping. What we do? We can call it stripping stuff. We stripping stuff. first of all, we put down blue tape. Okay, and we oh put it. I'm gonna explain that, honey, star of the show. Um, mm -hmm. The reason I put this down first is because if you put this weather stripping straight onto your substrate, when you pull it off, it has a tendency to leave little uh, particles of the rubber behind that gets into your um, epoxy. Um, and so that's why we do that. I would love to take full credit for all of this but I can't. We are not the first ones to use the weather stripping. And I will give a shout out to the other, well, actually I won't say who told me about it, but I did see it on another channel. But I do want to give a shout out to Ryan Wakefield, who let us on to the idea of putting the, the blue tape. Was it, was it Ryan? Who was it? Was it Keith? It was you? Kenny! It was Kenny? Holy cow, all this time I've been giving credit to someone else? Dang it, oh Ryan. Oh my gosh. I'm not, I'm not gonna be mad about Oh that. my I'm gosh. give it to Ryan. Okay, I'm Ryan. so sorry, it honey. Ryan. It was Ryan, okay. Anyway, sorry, my bad. Anyway, Ryan. if you will put the blue tape down first, flat, right on the edge, guys, you only wanna put it about at the width of your weather stripping. Okay, don't put it way out here. You wanna put it about the width of your weather stripping. Then put your weather stripping on top. So that way when you pull it off, you're pulling off the blue tape, which then is bringing, uh, taking off the weather stripping. So now what this is, this is really important also, when you put it down, make sure that you really press it down and almost kind of burnish it. You know, I mean, you could take off this little strip, uh-oh, See, I didn't push what? it down no, enough. You don't want to take that off. Oh, I don't want to take that off? Okay, Ten Kenny told me I didn't want to take that off. Anyway, you, you We're do. We're going to take it off. You do, <laughs> you do want to press it down. JK. And also, pan in on these corners, Kenny. Anywhere that you have a corner. Put toothpaste. Where two pieces meet, you want to put white or whatever color, but, pa matter. but paintable caulking. <laughs> you don't want to put silicone. If you put silicone, that silicone residue is going to get on your piece and it's going to cause um, your epoxy to resist and not stick to your substrate. So make sure that it is a paintable caulking. But anywhere that you have a seam or if you run out of the weather stripping and you butt up another piece, it's make sure yeah, make sure that you use that caulking or that's going to be a source of where the epoxy is going to leak. All right. Um, let's get started. Alrighty, so first of all, here's the products. Oh, by the way, um, I stay have, hydrated. stay hydrated. It's hot outside. It is very important that you stay hydrated. Get your grape juice. I just might have uh, a cab in there, maybe. But anyway, mostly. I digress. We have white, opaque dye, and I have tinted this cup very opaquely, which means when I lift it up, I really can't see the stick grains. I could even actually go a tiny bit more opaque. I was like, mm. yeah, don't judge me. I was in a hurry. Okay. All right, so we added a little more and we're gonna make it even more opaque. So that's a lumalite dye and not Yes, yeah, so white isopropyl alcohol. Right, so this was a white, I mean, yeah, this is not isopropyl alcohol. I just have all my dye in here because <laughs> I use so much of it. I go through those little bottles so fast. Okay, so I have tinted. I'm going to tint it even more. How about that? We're getting crazy. I'm getting crazy tonight, y'all. I don't know what's happening. That's what happens when Erica shows up. But I get crazy. I literally right. just pulled up. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. So now I've got it very opaque. I cannot see the grain on my stick when I pull it up. 
Now our next cup, do I have another stick? Our next cup, now this one I have tinted with the same dye, the alumilite opaque dye, but I've tinted it very transparent almost, almost like a skim milk. This is whole milk, this is skim milk. I was gonna say it looks like that yeah. lactose free milk. Yeah, this is, this is the lactose free stuff. All right, see that? This is the whole milk. The fatty vitamin D. The fatty D. vitamin D milk. All right, got Some that? stuff. Okay, now to that, we are going to add. I brought you more of that. My new favorite product from Color Passion called White Shimmer. See that? See this powder? All right, it is a very shimmery powder. Erica, why don't you tell them about this powder? I'm gonna add it to my white dye, okay? So what, sh what should we know about this white shimmer? That it is not really white, it's more of a pearl. Mm -hmm. And it is a high grade mica, so it's not gonna clump up like some of the cheaper micas sometimes do. You know those color freckles that give you those striations? We're, Booger, what do we call them? Uh, Fishtails, boogers, we call them all kind of Just things. Just like those freckles of color that never soaked into your resin. So, now normally, the reason I didn't mix this first, guys, and use, um, either make a slurry out of alcohol or use our thin dispersion, is because I wanted you guys to see what I was doing. Normally, I would mix up the shimmer first then I would add my epoxy. Then I would add a little bit of the white dye. But I wanted you guys to see exactly kind of what I was doing. And I already had all my, oops, already had all my epoxy mixed. All right, so in this cup, we're going to do just a tiny bit they of. They said you put too much of the powder in there. Why did I? Who said that? You said, they said you used a lot. I did use a lot because I want it to be able to, if I didn't use that much, the problem I would have is because I've already tinted this white with the opaque dye, I would have a very hard time seeing the shimmer. Normally, if I did not have the white dye in there already, I wouldn't have put as much powder. And if you're gonna do the and wake up thing know. later, the more powder you have in it, right. the more uh, obvious the effect of your wake up right. is. In my opinion, I don't know, I don't wake yeah. up too much. So, <laughs> so that is why, uh, if I were just tinting clear epoxy with the uh, white shimmer, I probably would not have put that much. Uh, I may have, depending on what look I was trying to achieve. The cab said go for it. But all of it in that's there. exactly what it was. Okay, now this one you'll notice, I barely same thing. tinted. What? Same thing. What? This is kinda this milky. is yeah. It's kind of this is like really that's water, water. That's, and lactose. That's milk. right, and that's what I want. I want just a hint of color. So we have white, but we have three different whites. This oh, is going so to give us some real cool shimmer. Now, what's going to be fun, and you don't even know this, Erica, is what we're going to do. So, I'm already interested because you're using 72 whites and you have a black prep board. Yes. So, I'm very interested yes. in what's about to go down. All right. So, everybody see those? So, now, if you don't have the white shimmer, you can use the white opaque, I mean, the white mica powders from uh, Illumilite that we have on our website. We will be carrying the Color Passion products. If you've noticed on our website, we have added resin art. We've added a few of the color passions and um, we are increasing our inventory on the Just Resin products. So they're fabulous. She'll have a restock in the morning. That's right, all right. So yeah, Erica bought me a big old box of stuff to restock, I'm so excited. All right, so I have two ounces of black opaque dye. Now you're gonna ask, like Erica said, why are you pouring white over black? Because 
Where we have the translucent or the lighter tinted white epoxy, that black is gonna ghost up and give us kind of some shadowy looks in theory. So we're gonna see. All right, so I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna pour it out first. And all I'm doing with this black, and it doesn't matter, you don't have to use two ounces. I just had it in this cup just to make it simple for you guys to understand what I'm doing. All I'm doing is doing a grease coat. Would you like to do my grease? Oh, I go? get to grease. I was just gonna like <laughs> clean up all your yeah. stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna make a grease coat. And oh, and also I was told by a lovely fan that when I have a guest, I need to get out of the way and let them do their job. Hey, so. uh, tell them, I don't know why it keeps on going in and out of focus, but there's nothing I can focus on, uh, cam on the phone. Yeah, we're using a phone, guys, so we don't have a focusing ability. And I don't know why it's going in. Okay, I can tell you. Why? So I, okay, for any of you guys that have the yeah. brand new. Um, yeah, look, it's going. Oh, right now it is? Yeah. Okay, so if you have the new iPhone, it's got three cameras in it, mm -hmm. three lenses. So a lot of times it tries to focus. So if you get really close, it'll switch lenses. So maybe it's trying to pick up both of us. I'm not real sure what's going on. Let me back up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll try that. Okay, so the reason we're doing a grease coat is because epoxy likes to flow where epoxy has already uh -huh. been. So what are we doing now? It's oh, it could be because I'm Buffering. Okay. So we have been having some issues. Let if me any make sure of you guys off. have AT and T, we're not on Wi Fi though. Oh, this right. Is not on wi -Fi. Yeah. So we've been having some issues with AT and T out here. So I'm not real sure if they're messing with some towers or what's going on. So I apologize if it's buffering, but we're gonna try to get through this. So sorry, guys. So the reason that we do a grease coat is because. Epoxy likes to go where epoxy has already been. And by providing a very slick surface, when we go to our next step, it's gonna help that epoxy to flow a little better than if we were to pour it just straight on to a dry board. Now, why did we dam our edges? Because we usually don't do that. The reason we're damming the edges is because we're doing more than three ounces per square foot. We're gonna do six ounces per square foot, which means if we did not dam our edges, are we still buffering? No. Okay, if we did not dam our edges, because epoxy likes to self-level, and it self-levels till about an eighth of an inch, which is about three ounces per square foot. By using more epoxy and not forcing it to stay on the surface, all that's going to happen when we go to six ounces or even eight, even 10 ounces a square foot, depending on what you're doing, all of that epoxy is going to basically run off the edges onto your table and your finish is going to look beautiful for about an hour and then everything's going to roll over. Mm -hmm. But by taping our edges or damming up our edges, we're forcing all of this product to stay on the surface until it starts to gel and starts to slow down on its movement. Now, with this type of dam, as opposed to just taping your edges, you're not gonna want to wait as long as you would if you just had tape. And the reason is now, because you are about a, I don't know, half an inch into the edge, mm -hmm. as opposed to the epoxy three, three coming, eight. three eighths, sorry. <laughs> Whoops, oh. my bad. <laughs> but up to, Oops the actual tape, you've got that much farther, your epoxy has to roll to get over that edge. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna keep it dammed up as long as you would if, like I said, if you just had the tapes on the edges. But we still wanna keep it dammed up long enough for that epoxy yeah, to start to roll. slow down. I mean, don't do it too early. Yeah, too late, yeah, if you do it too late, you're gonna have fun because when you pull it, it's not gonna wanna roll. You're gonna have to heat it up and but you and can make it work. yeah, you can make it work, but you don't want to. You want to get that perfect window. All right, so here we go. Now, Erica, here's the fun part that I didn't yep. explain to you. 
Oh, now you're going to explain. Now I'm going to explain to you. We're going to do a little different, guys. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in with our black. All right. I'm going to wipe my hand down a little bit. I just. Okay. I'm going to give you guys another pro tip. I'm going to full of pro tips tonight. Wow. Before you pro start, <laughs> before you start your project, if you will take a bunch of your paper towels and you will put them in strips and put them in a pile and then saturate those um, with alcohol, then when you go to grab your alcohol bottle or your products, if you just grab your um, paper towel first that's loaded with alcohol and wipe your hands, you keep yourself clean. All right, so <laughs> where's my black? Here it is. Okay, so we're going to take our black dye. Watch. Oh, you're going to swirl it in there? And we're going to swirl it. So I'm going to take a little bit of dye. Babe, why don't you kind of, let's go do it right here so they can see. All right, so Erica, why don't you get a cup? Yep. Nope. I'll get a cup. Here. You've got, oh. you've got the cup that's got the, um, the shimmer in it. Oh, that. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of dye. And you can do the same thing if you don't have this with the Illumilite dye, okay? And we're literally going to put it in the white, okay? And then I'm going to take that, and I'm very carefully going to stir it. That's all I'm going to do right there, okay? You're just going to keep it on the... Yep, I'm going to show you. Keep it on the top. So right. that you don't mix it in, right? Right. You don't want we don't to want to create gray. We want to have separation. And then we're going to start pouring it out very random. Now, when you start seeing it get just white, where I don't have do much color, I'm going to do it again. All right, your turn. <gasps> Erica, if you want to do it too. I'm going to do it in the pearl. Yep, you're going to do it in the pearl. Word. Okay. How random? Very random. Super random. No, Super. So random. So, so random. random. Now, what's really fun is you can do some of your cups really dark with quite a bit of the black. Like this one's going to have a quite a bit more black than the first one. And I'm going to come back and put it through the white. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and scrape this one. Okay. Personally, I like to roll it. You want to put some over here and then I'll... You like to roll it? Oh, did you see what Erica's doing? She's got a little bit different technique. She rolls hers. Nice. Thanks. Just came with that. Um, right now. <laughs> Not really. I roll my resin all the time. All right. So I'm going to do the same thing. And because we have the whites are so different in their opaqueness, we're going to get such a different look. Now here's the white that's really not tinted very much. So you can really see how that right, black, black took over in that. Kind of took over in that. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna add a little bit more just because that looks so red when you can see through it. I know. Sorry, I so got too excited. So that's oh, oh, sorry. That's already? why I wanted to barely tint that cup with white because it's causing a transparent effect. Now you can do more than six ounces per square foot. And let me tell you when you might want to do that. If you're doing, <laughs> when you ask, if you're Always. doing a pour on site and you don't have the ability to tilt your piece, then you may want to use more than six ounces per square foot. Yeah. But I know that we have the ability to tilt this, and therefore I can really get this product to move. All right, we're going to start. Listen, a tilt is one of my favorite techniques because it makes everything so, like, flow together. It just looks so natural when you can do that. All right, so because we have the black down as a grease coat, is this art coat? Yes, this is art coat. Mm -hmm. Because we have the, the um, grease coat down, 
our product is going to move and then Erica is going to kind of touch it with her fingers and kind of help. Just fill in where it's a little bit too thin, you know? She's going to, yeah, so she's going to help that product move. You're all the way to the end. Am I? Mostly. Okay. I mean, right. there's still pockets, Boy, but. All right. I'm going to heat up a little bit more. And then we're going to tilt it and get the edges on that side. Now, like I said, if you're doing an on-site pour, your epoxy is going to move. It's going to level out because it's trying to get to be an eighth of an inch. Mm -hmm. So if you don't have the ability to torch, just you use, tilt. I meant tilt. Words are hard. <laughs> just tilt. Then go ahead and use a little more epoxy Epoxy per square inch, I mean per square foot. Or square inch, however you want to do your math. Words are hard and numbers are worse. That's right. Okay, so now I'm going to heat it up again. And I'm going to tilt it again. Did you put all these fine lines in there? I didn't see that happen. That was just left over from the cups. You want to tilt that? All right, so as you start moving, where if you'll you, start kind where, of. Where do you want it? Just kind of get it to move down there. As you heat your piece, you'll see that I can really start making the epoxy move in certain areas. If I want one area to move more than the other, I can just heat that up more and really cause it to move. Erica's going to go ahead and take this. Now what you don't want to do is heat and move your epoxy too fast. You don't want it to move too fast because what will happen is you'll get these little fingers. A lot of times if you heat in front of that area, it'll, it'll move. move. Exact. Instead of heating the exact area that you want to move, heat right in front of it. This is still... Now, also, my epoxy has been sitting in, a, in that bucket for about mm, 15 minutes because I was getting ready for the live. So I'm going to go ahead and tilt it a little bit to the side. And so that's why it is a little thicker than normal. So we may even be able to pull this epoxy, I mean, pull this tape while we're on the live. Before we do that, we need to hit that corner. Yes, let's hit this corner a little bit. Where's my torch? Now see what I really love, and I'll show them really quick. By using the white alumilite dye, but by using the black, Color Passion, I love how I'm getting some cells right here. I love that. I think that's so pretty. But we're going to we're gonna take this to the next level, guys. We're not done. It's so fun. But look at the transparency here. See, by using All of that clear. Look yes. So great. See how there, it looks like that is okay. down okay. underneath? Put my in it. By putting that clear or the very, very light tint epoxy. Look how I'm creating depth right there. This over that See that line? is so great. Isn't that pretty? I love this. Now look at all of this yumminess here. All this, that action. This is so pretty. Look at this right here. It looks 3D. Because the last layer that I poured in the cup was the clear, or not the clear, but the very, very lightly tinted epoxy. And look at that. Okay, so yeah, pro tip. Make your transparent cup last. Because it won't make sense if you put it down first. It's going to get buried under your opaque colors. Mm. Yep. Make sure that your transparent that is, so rad. is the last thing that you put. So it goes over all of the heavier tinted epoxy. Mm -hmm. That's how you create that onyx look. Okay. So we're gonna actually, you know what? We're gonna actually pull this tape here in a little bit because we, like I said, our epoxy has been sitting in the cup for about 15, almost 20 minutes. So it's already really starting to set up. 
and it looks great. All we right. Still got two more cups. We have two more cups of what? Oh yeah, we. Oh, you know what? So we have some more clear. So Erica, what do you think we should do with this? What would be fun to do with this? I kind of want to add, make it a little translucent and do the black again. Okay, so I'm going to let Erica take that last small cup. So we have about four ounces. This is a four ounce cup. So we have about four ounces of clear epoxy that's left. And she's going to be adding a little bit of the white shimmer. Yeah. Just a tiny bit. See that? White shimmer. Yep. And what else are you going to add to it? I'm going to swirl some black in and it. And she's going to swirl some black. Now what I have is some diamond dust mixed up in clear. But I'm going to wait and we're going to apply that last because I really want this to get nice and thick. Because when I go to spread this, I don't want all my particles, because my diamond dust is heavier, I don't want it to all sink to the bottom. So that's why I'm allowing this to kind of sit in my cup and start to gel up. All right, so she's playing over here. She's being a scientist. You need another stick? Man, I got one. I was just trying to get all the residual off the edge. All right, so she's just going to swirl that around. Yeah, I'm doing a translucent pearl. Okay. And so, then I'm going to do the black. Okay, so you're doing basically the same thing that I did with the white. You're just doing it with the pearl. Okay, yep. cool. So what she's doing... I made my translucent with white dye. She's making her translucent with the shimmer pearl. Okay? All right, let's see what you got. Oh my gosh, y'all, this looks so pretty. Oh, <laughs> so pretty. All right, and then she drizzled a little bit of black in it. So she's got you the can't black. Swirl it. I know, it's all the way at the top. You can't swirl it. <laughs> First world. All right, so she's added a little bit of black. Where are we right. going to go with it? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know, because I always am like, what, what There's part a do big I white, like the maybe? Least? Maybe? Yeah. All right, here well, we go. Well, here's a low spot. So. Okay. Yeah, we're, that's a good idea. Ooh, yeah, look at that. Maybe I'll just tie it into some of the already dark areas. Yeah, I don't want to take up too much of the... That side. Mmm. Let's see. Let's maybe go right here. How did I just pour out solid black almost and you pour out... <laughs> exactly clear mine's pretty clear all right I like that though and then I'm just gonna put what's left in the cup I'm just gonna drizzle it and get some really cool little veins by putting these tiny little veins they're gonna look like little fracture lines action all right so you're holding the Milky Way till the very end nope Diamond dust. Diamond Sorry. dust, yes. So, I love this. I'm going to torch it a little bit just to get these bubbles out. Okay, so remember, anytime we add more epoxy to the surface, we're going to make this is going to get bigger. Because remember, this epoxy is trying to do what? It's trying to self-level. So when we, when we add more, remember, it's going to spread. Whatever is there, it's going to spread it out. Love it. I call All these right. candy ribbons because they yes, look like they're ribbon candy. Yes, they're beautiful. Candies. All right, let's go ahead and, you know what? Let's go ahead and pull the tape. We're going to show you guys. It may be a little early to pull the tape, but I want to pull the tape before I put the diamond dust in there. Look, here we got, look, here's also fun. See, you know what? I'm going to save that. I'm going to save that until we pull the tape. All right, so let's go ahead and start pulling the tape. Now, mind you, if we had more epoxy and our epoxy was a little fresher, meaning I didn't have it sitting in our bucket for 15 or 20 minutes before we started, 
we would let this sit a little bit longer. But because we want you guys to see what it looks like, we're gonna go ahead and pour it, pull it now. Ah, it's stuck in my finger. We're gonna pull it now. I am so excited about this piece. Sorry, I'm just yelling at people. So pretty and so simple, guys. We used two colors, literally. And look what we've created. Listen, black and white is just classic. It the is only thing that'll level it up is adding gold. And, not and we're likes actually gold. going to add gold. That was gonna be my secret for tonight. That's the secret sauce? That's it, we're gonna add some gold. Great minds, dude. Okay, ouch. All right, so now to help, I'm gonna come on this side so you guys can It looks see. like a black Pop-Tart. It does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can see that it's starting to go ahead and flow. Um, hand me that torch, Erica, if you don't mind. So what you can do is come in here and very lightly heat your edge to help your epoxy start to run. And then you can remember, epoxy likes to go where epoxy's already been. So I'm gonna help it speed up the process by just taking it. You're just peeling that. And just, yep, like and just edge, right? peeling it down and helping the epoxy start to flow. First time I did this, I was like, that's disgusting. What did I just do? <laughs> so I'm not even worried about the way it looks because this right here, I know the epoxy is gonna keep coming over and it's gonna give me some beautiful edges. All I'm doing now is encouraging it to flow over very smoothly and evenly by dragging my fingers and touching it. Now you can see why we tell you guys not to wait as long as you would if you had tape because you've got this much additional board that that epoxy's got to flow over than if you just had it taped there to your edge. And like I said, this is a fabulous way to do your edges if you're doing a dirty pour and you have a rock edge. Because rock edges are almost impossible to dam up without um, getting a leak and then having all of your epoxy. Just running one Running area. crazy. Now see, look. See, look at the edge. Isn't that pretty? And you could even come here and take the epoxy that's dripping and bring it and help it to flow maybe where you don't have as much of that material flowing and just give it a boost and help it out. Now we'll come back later on and we'll address our edges a little bit more and we'll probably even use some <gasps> of the drips. Looks awesome. In our design process. Okay. So guys, I mean, you, you know as well as I do, if you've, if you've done epoxy a lot, that photos and videos don't do it justice. It's picking it up pretty nice. Especially if it's black. Yeah. It's, black is so hard to video. It's so hard to video. But I wish you guys could really see the depth in this piece. It looks like, I mean, it looks like a quartz, doesn't it? It's absolutely gorgeous. I'd have it in my house. And let me tell you, these cells are just popping everywhere. Yep. All right, I'm gonna torch it. Are we gonna do any post tape tilts? Nah, I think I'm just gonna leave it. Let it, let, I want everybody to see. Now where we are a little bit shy on some material, you can kind of, as it starts to drip off the front, you can take those drips and maybe add it. Got them. Now what I'm gonna do, I still have a little bit of material in this one cup. I'm gonna show you guys. See, I have a little bit of material. I'm gonna heat it up just a little bit. All right, and now I'm just gonna come back over and do some fun little fracture lines. And now these fracture lines, even though they look very distinct right now, they're gonna just blend and get super soft 
and they'll almost look like cracks in, the, in a slab. Let me give you some of that. I'm going to have some extra. Okay. All right. Now, let's get some fun stuff going on here. All right, so now I have the diamond dust, okay? And honestly, if I were not on a live, I would still, I would wait probably another 20 minutes or so before I do what I'm fixing to do right now because this is going to sink because my epoxy is still pretty fresh. If we were, say, another 30 minutes down the road and our epoxy was even um, more gel than it is now, what I'm fixing to do right now, that would stay. Whoops. Oops sorry. Sorry, Kenny went the wrong way. <laughs> Oops. So this is what the ceiling <laughs> looks like. What looks That's like. what the TV looks like. If this were, like I said, 30 minutes down the road, when I go to drag all of this diamond dust on top, the vein that I'm going to put would stay very distinct. But because the epoxy is very fluid still, my particles are probably going to sink a little bit. But that's okay. Lazy particles. It's just going to sink. So here, I'm just going to get some on my stick. How many, how many ounces did you use? Six? Six ounces per square foot is what I used on this piece, yes. All right, so I'm just very... I don't know, randomly, I guess. How random? Very random. <laughs> so she random. She's wow. just... <laughs> Take 12. You can even set yourself up and then... Ooh. I know. So all I'm doing is bringing in some veins. You can follow an existing pattern, or you can be random and just kind of go where you want to go. No, look at this halo. Now, I also like to just put dots. Dots. So it looks like just little pockets. We should have pre-pocketed. Pre-pocketed it? Yeah, when we did the skin. Yeah. So we're just going to have fun. Fun's my favorite. Fun's your favorite? Here, you want to do some? Save me a little bit in the cup, and I'm going to do one more fun little thing. So if you don't want the bling... This could have been a Ooh, finish would not want the all on I know, you were on the wrong channel. But <laughs> we like the bling. So, uh, guys, I am loving this. And i tell you what else you could have done. If you really want a lot of bling, that last cup that I did that was just the clear and I uh, added, oh, actually, that uh, you added some of your white shimmer. You yeah. could have loaded that up with diamond dust. And when you poured it out, you would have big pockets of the, the shimmer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we put some pretty veins in there. Now I'm going to show you what we're going to do. What do y'all think about that? Y'all like that? I do dots like these in my geodes all the time. I do. I love that. I just love, like this little piece right here. Look at this. See how it's kind of starting to sink? That right there, that looks just so cool. Scribble. That's a scribble. I love a scribble. Now you can see how the diamond dust is starting to kind of go down and, and sink down into the epoxy. And that looks cool. If you want that to be a very, very faint line of diamond dust, then absolutely you can um, just put your, your veins at this point, knowing that they're going to sink. Now what I want to do... I'm going to come in with, actually, I don't want to use quite so much diamond dust. Let's add a few more veins on here. I don't want to mix all of this up with my next additive. So I'm, I'm just bringing this out, guys, just adding it. Don't think about it. Just do it. And get that bling in there. That was a long pull. Are you sure it was only 15 minutes? Yeah. 50, maybe 20. <laughs> maybe 20. Maybe it was sitting in the cup for 20 minutes. Who's to say? It could have been yesterday. It could have been yesterday. Okay. All right. Now, I've got about, oh, let's see. I probably have about an ounce in this cup left of the clear 
and mixed with the diamond dust. Now I'm going to take Rust-Oleum. Nope, I lied. Yep, it is Rust-Oleum. Nope. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Mm. It's the Bruce metallic. And this is the one that's got the really shiny top. Okay? Bling. The bling bling top. This is a very fast drying spray paint, meaning if I spray it on the top, it's going to stay on top and it's going to be very, very shiny and it's not going to really fracture if you try to put alcohol on it if it sits for any amount of time. Do I'm going to take that, that. None of the clear, um, I mean, none of the really shiny topped epoxies. Where'd you go? I'm right none here. of the, the, clear, the shiny topped epoxies will fracture well with alcohol. Now, I'm going to take that and I'm going to spray some directly into my cup. I want you guys to see what it looks like. See how it's really super shiny? Super shiny. Super, 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 shi super shiny. It's super shiny. I think I muted that. Mm. All right, so I'm going to I think you extra it. that, and I am all about the extra. All right, so now I'm going to stir it in. All right. Just fold it in. Fold it. That's a cooking term. I don't know those. All right, now watch what happens when I stretch it out. Now that gold is kind of playing a part with the diamond dust. Gold is everything. You know, they sell an aerosol gold in a jar that you don't have to spray. Oh, is that right? I did not know that. I'll have to look for that. It's by Montana. By my, oh yes, you brought some. You left some here. Actually, I used all of yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we didn't want that bad. That's right. All right, so see you guys. This looks how, so good. Look how I'm just dragging that around. And I'm not worried about any of the little drips that I'm dripping off my stick and off the cup because it's creating these little dots that I love. Now I can add more. I'm going to add a little bit more of the gold. Erica, jump in here and start doing some fun stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's some more. I just added some more of that spray. And I'm coming over the surface. Same thing. All right. I'm going to kind of build into this. Now it's fixing to get Western here, guys, because now Erica is going to start playing Western. I wish I could whistle to do that. Boo, boo, boo. Thank you. All right, I am out of diamond dust and gold, so all I can do. Is that not beautiful? Now let me show you what happens when you do hit it a little bit with alcohol. I'm gonna put a little bit of alcohol on my fingers, okay? I'm just gonna spray it on my fingers, and now I'm gonna come in and I'm just going to flick it a little bit, and nah, it's not really doing much of anything. No. <laughs> yep. That paint dries so quickly that that alcohol is not going to penetrate it and get it to do anything. Let me heat. There's a couple of bubbles in there I want to take care of. I'm just trying this on the corner to see if I like now, it. Now, at this point, guys, you don't want to add a lot of heat. If I go and start torching this, it's going to make my epoxy very fluid again, and all of my particles are going to sink. And at that point, you won't be able to see them. What are we doing? Um, covering. I tested it to see if I liked it, and I didn't, so I just did it on the corner, all scraped right. it off, and then just added a little bit of something to make it look like a piece again. There we go. So remember I said we're going to come and get the drips? Let me see. Is there any drips up front, Kenny? There's a lot of drips up front. Is there? Okay, looky here. All right, look, these are going to be fun. So I'm going to come and scoop anywhere I, I may have, I don't know, an area that I want to add. I'm going to get this stick, and I can come in here and add some fun areas. I can also, if I have an area that I need to add, give it a little bit more character, I can just add it here on the edge. And as that rolls over, 
it's going to give my edge a really cool look. Don't discount your drips, guys. You can come back and use those drips to your advantage and make some really fun designs. All right, I love this. Now, if you don't want it quite as busy, you don't have to put all of the little fracture lines that we did you could leave those out and it wouldn't be as busy. You could do bigger areas of your black and white and not have them so tightly done, you know, uh, rolled out of your cup. If you wanted, like I said, it not to be quite so busy, then you would just do bigger areas as you pour it out of your cup. Okay, so what are you doing? You're just coming straight in with the stick? Solid gold. Solid gold she's doing, okay. So she's taken the paint mm -hmm. and she's, did you just spray it on the table? And she's basically just sprayed that gold paint on the table and now it's on her stick and she's literally just dragging that through the epoxy. Because, I mean, when it's worked into the resin, it looks awesome, but when you mix gold spray paint into epoxy, it kind of browns it, bra it Yes, a it bit. dulls it. So I like to add just straight up gold onto my pieces because I mean it's a functional piece it's a countertop so you're gonna do a flood anyways you yeah. know Ooh, look at that I just love this I love how it looks like there's so much depth like this black look at this black line get Kenny I don't know if it'll show up that black line right there looks like it's suspended like it's literally literally a crack it looks amazing. I love this finish. Um, so what do y'all think, guys? Do y'all like this? And and I didn't put a stitch of blue in there. Or teal. Or teal. Or turquoise. So, hey. Um, they did say they wanted some, but. Nope. I had a hater last time come on there and told me that I, I could not that. create a finish without putting blue in it. Ooh, so, you just got the... Mad chicken toes. I you got the chicken arms. That's <laughs> right. I did it. There's no blue in this piece. Or Nothing turquoise. related but to blue. But do you know how bad I want to put blue in this piece? Do All you have it? any idea? Blue, though. Cow. I want to put turquoise, actually. Hey, so when you sand this to do a flood coat, I just want the people to know that do not sand any floating gold or any of that metallic because you will dull it down to is that brown yes. that's what it, it will look like okay so she made a great point let's talk about flood coats really quick like erica said if i let this dry for 24 hours and then i come back and i sand it because that's what we do to create a mechanical bond with our clear flood coat you're gonna to have to be very, very careful and not sand over that gold that's floating on the top. You can tell or, it's floating because it hits the light different. Yeah, it, you can, it looks like it's suspended on top. Now, what you like can a do, a booger, can you're you? a booger. What you can do I mean, I is, love. instead of waiting 24 hours, wait about 12, may, depending on where you're at. It, you may only have to wait nine hours. It depends on where you're at, your heat, and your humidity. But you, what you want to do is wait until you can touch the top, and it feels like sticky tape. It doesn't come off on your finger. It doesn't leave a string. Your finger comes off clean, but it still feels very tacky. Mm -hmm. At that point, you don't have to sand. You can't sand. You can pour your flood coat, and at that point, you're going to have a, mechan uh, a chemical bond instead of a mechanical bond, meaning you're still going to have a really good bond between your color coat, which is what this is, and the flood coat. So when I do add paint like this that floats, or if I do what we call a granification where I spray black spray paint or whatever color spray paint, and then we do the Italian drip, that spray paint is staying on top. Uh, she just can't do that, can't. Hey, can't. <laughs> it's staying on top. 
So by sanding it really aggressive, I could scratch it. So that's another instance where you may want to wait and do your flood coat when your color coat is still tacky. Now, once you do your flood coat, you're gonna wanna wait 24 hours and you're gonna wanna put your ultimate top coat if you decide to go to that step. I highly recommend it. The ultimate top coat is an amazing product. Um, it, it just gives a piece so much durability that we use it on all of our pieces. I would definitely go with the gloss on this one. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the matte, but I would definitely do the gloss on this one. Uh, okay, so you like it? I love this piece. All right, simplicity guys. Really, honestly, this was very simple. The color I mean, palette was simple. The color palette was simple. That was all that was simple about that, it. That is not true. This was a very We just had fun, guys. We literally just had fun with this. There is nothing hard about this. Every single one of you that are watching can do this. I'm telling you, you can do it. And if you can't do it, call me. I'll walk you through it. All righty. So. Right. I guess that's it. We're not gonna go. We're not gonna go to the next level because this is beautiful, and I don't want to do anything else. <laughs> the next it. step is turquoise. The next step would be me adding turquoise, and <laughs> I am not gonna do that. Okay, so a couple announcements. We are extending still the free shipping till the end of August. We are still doing same day shipping as long as you. Uh, call your order in or not call your order don't in. call it in do yeah don't call it in as long as you do your order online before uh, noon central time now um, I don't remember what I was gonna say I guess it wasn't important <laughs> all right guys um, do you have any announcements that you would like to say tell everybody where they can find you you can find me at artistilldeath.com looks like this artistilldeath.com Two, and what do you always say? Two, two, two T's, T's, two L's, and two, two T's, two L's. Do, 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 and do. also Bowie. Oh yeah, this hi. is Bowie. Say hi to Bobo. All right, guys. So if I don't have the Just Resin products or the Color Passion products or the Resin Art products in stock on my website, run over to artisttilldeath.com. She's got, I think, 800 colors. Eight, I was going to say 800 million colors, but that's that probably more accurate. Maybe a little <laughs> exaggeration there. Anyway, so check out her website. She's got some amazing colors. All righty, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in. This is the highlight of my week, especially I think this week. Uh, and I'm so glad that y'all joined us. I love each and every one of you. Thank you for all the phone calls <laughs> I'm always getting from you guys, just encouraging us to keep going and uh, just from all the support from you guys. We love you and we thank you for what you do for us. Until next week, remember, don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. All right, love you guys, see you next week. I did it! Oh yeah, bye. Adios. <laughs>